Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and as the title of the video suggests today's topic today's sorting algorithm is shell sort sorting algorithm so we're going to divide this topic into two parts two videos this first part is where we discuss the theory we discuss the working as well as we'll see a pseudo code and dry run that pseudo code step by step visually by taking an example by taking the diagram so this is a very very important video and then in the part 2 we will convert this pseudo code into code that is into c++ program just the way that we've been doing so far in previous tutorials of dsa so i'll link the entire data structures and algorithms playlist in the video description in case you are new and if you've missed any of the topics do check it out and with that being said let's get started if you're new to my channel my name is tanmay sakpal and i do a lot of computer science and information technology video tutorials like computer programming development technology talks and a lot more on this channel so if that's something you're interested into then definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications to get the latest updates and never miss out on such important topics so before we get to the working of shell sort let's go ahead and quickly go through a little bit of theory if you want you can directly skip to the working i'll put the time code somewhere below in this video itself but starting off with shell sort shell sort is a in place comparison sort so just like insertion selection bubble sort merge sort and most of the sorting algorithms shell sort is a comparison sort which means some kind of comparison is happening between the two elements so for example if our array is something like 51 7 10 11 12 17 and 18 okay so just for example a comparison sort would compare the elements in some way of course it will not be side by side but there would be some mechanism in which one element will be compared with another and depending upon who's greater who's smaller depending upon how you want to sort it in ascending or descending those elements will be switched swapped replaced and some kind of arithmetic will happen okay so that's what comparison sort is and talking about in place it means that this sorting algorithm does not require an extra array extra auxiliary space for performing the sorting the sorting happens in place which means it happens in this array itself the original array that's what in place means okay then moving on it is mainly a variation of sorting by exchange which is kind of like bubble sort or sorting by insertion which is like insertion sort so basically shell sort is just a variation or a different way or different approach of implementing bubble sort or insertion sort okay in our example that we are going to take we are going to understand or you know we're going to see bubble sort in a different way so that is shell sort okay now this algorithm avoids large shifts as in case of insertion sort if the smaller value is to the far right and has to be moved to the far left so for example let's take our array example only so let's say we have 2 1 7 and we have larger numbers to the right okay so here you can see in this example 1 2 and 7 are very small numbers compared to all these big numbers right and if you are sorting this in ascending order and if you use insertion sort by the way we've already talked about insertion sort extensively what happens is you pick this element and you put it at a appropriate place and you shift all these elements one place ahead so this shift operation takes a lot of overhead it puts a lot of you know inefficiency in the program in the algorithm especially if you have larger arrays let's say the smaller element is v to the right and it has to be brought to the left so so many shift operations has to happen right so this shell sort is basically trying to avoid this kind of shift and this is why it improves the efficiency so that's the idea of shell sort and so basically the idea of shell sort is to allow exchange of far items fast okay so at a particular gap or interval so the whole concept revolves around a gap and then you allow the exchange of elements at that distance at that interval so you'll understand more obviously this theory right now will not make sense i'm just going through it because if you want to make some notes for your exams you can take note of all these points i'm obviously going to be sharing all this theory all this explanation and the code obviously on our official website you can see a link in the video description for this article but moving on let's just go through the theory everything will make sense by the end of this video so please watch this video till the end i can assure you if you watch this video till the end in one go everything will make sense now moving on this spacing is termed as interval or gap or sometimes represented as h so that's this is the variable name standard variable names we'll be calling it gap 
Now shell sort is more efficient compared to insertion sort or bubble sort, especially when smaller value elements are towards the end of the array list. For example, in this case, you can see smaller elements like 7, 2 and 1 are to the end of this list. And when you want to sort them in ascending order, a shell sort algorithm will be more efficient compared to bubble sort or insertion sort. So that's point number one. It's more efficient when we have large sized array. So if the size of the array is huge, because the time complexity of shell sort is a little bit more efficient compared to insertion and selection. So that's point number two. And third is efficiency depends on how we select the gap and interval. Now the way we select this interval or gap also has an impact on the efficiency. Now there are different ways in which you can do that. In our case, what we are going to do is we are going to take a gap of n by two, where n is the size of the array. And here our example array is going to have a size of eight. Okay. So you'll understand this gap and n everything as we move ahead. But yeah, this was a little bit of theory. Now the time complexity over here, you can see we have three different values because the time complexity in best case, worst case and average case is different for this particular algorithm. Now we've talked about time complexity, space complexity in two separate tutorials in this DSA playlist. Those are very, very important. Do check them out. But the best case scenario is omega of n log n. Worst case is O of n square which is basically quadratic, which is like insertion or sele selection or bubble sort. And the average case is theta of n log of n raised to 2. So this is raised to 2, not into 2. Okay. Now the space complexity, especially the auxiliary space is O of 1. As we know that this is an in-place sorting algorithm. No extra space is required to perform all the operations. The sorting happens in this array itself. And hence it is O of 1. Now this is auxiliary space complexity. Okay. So if you want to calculate the overall space complexity, it would be O of N, which is basically because our algorithm will at least require the input array, right? So the input array will take some space in the memory to store the elements. But apart from that, we are not storing anything else. So we've talked about auxiliary space also in the space complexity video. So yeah, this was a little bit of theory. Now let's see the working of shell sort and how this interval and gap works and how we can implement it. Okay, so as you can see on the left hand side, we have the working in the form of steps. So I've written it in the form of steps in the form of algorithm. We'll obviously see the pseudocode after this. So make sure you watch this video till the end. But let's at least have an overview about how the shell sort algorithm works. Below over here, we have our example integer array onto which we are going to apply the shell sort. So let's read these steps because they're written in plain simple English and try to understand the overall working. So let's start off with step number one. So first we have to take the input array and the size of the array as n or whatever you're taking or whatever variable you're using. The next thing is you have to initialize the value of gap. And here we're going to take the gap of n by two iteratively. Okay. So as I mentioned, shell sort is a variation of insertion or bubble sort. In our case, we are going to apply bubble sort, but what happens is in bubble sort, we compare elements which are adjacent to each other and perform the swapping if needed or we move ahead, right? So I hope you watch bubble sort and insertion sort and other sorting algorithms in this course. But in shell sort, as I mentioned, we have the concept of gap or interval. So we use this gap and compare two elements which are spaced at this particular interval or at this particular gap, okay? So that's why we need to take the gap value and we need to calculate this gap. So there are different ways and different formulas to calculate this gap. In our example, our formula is going to be gap is equal to n by two. And we're going to divide the gap by two every time for every pass. So initially the gap would be nine by two because nine is the size of the array, right? So nine by two will be 4.5. Now, obviously, in the programming perspective, it is going to be an integer variable. So this 0.5 will not be taken into consideration. So initially the gap will be four. So for first pass, the gap will be four. So for second pass, the gap will be four again, divided by two, which is going to be two. For the third pass, gap will be two divided by two, which is going to be one. And when we go for the fourth pass, we say, gap is equal to one divided by two, which is going to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 will be truncated. So we are left with zero. So when we are going to reach the gap of zero, that is when this algorithm will stop working. So the outermost for loop is going to 
run till the gap is greater than zero because then once it becomes zero, you cannot compare the same element with itself, right? So whatever is the gap, we're gonna compare two elements spaced with that gap value. Hence that condition is gonna be gap greater than zero. So you'll see that in the pseudo code, but right now I'm just trying to verbally say it and maybe it's confusing. So let's actually move ahead with step number four. So first thing we have to initialize the gap. So let's also apply this as we go ahead. So we are at step number two. For the first time, as I mentioned, gap is equal to n by two, which is gonna be nine by two because n is nine, right? You can see size over here is nine. So it's gonna be 4.5. And as I mentioned, float values are not accepted. So the point value is gonna be truncated. So we're gonna left with four. Okay, so this is for pass one. Now the step three is compare two elements at the distance of gap at every iteration. So let's write these values over here in our array so that we can perform the calculations. So I'll use some other color. Yeah, 170, 75, 802 and so on. Okay, so step number three says compare two elements at the distance of gap at every iteration. So this is the first element. What is the gap four? So if we count four elements from zero, so this is one, two, three, and this is the fourth element from the first element, right? So you have to take this element and compare it with the first element. So these two are supposed to be compared. Okay. So this is what step three is saying, compare two elements at the distance of gap at every iteration. And after comparing it, step four says, if the element at the left is larger than the element at the right, perform swap or shift depending upon whether you use bubble sort or insertion sort. And in, a, in our case, as I mentioned, we're going to do bubble sort. So we have to do the swapping, right? So we have to compare the element on the left. So this is the element on the left and this is the element on the right. Now we are performing sorting, which means we want this entire array into ascending order. So obviously the smaller element has to come to the left of the larger element, right? So that's what this step number four is saying. If the element at the left is larger. So over here it is 170 and 170 is obviously larger than 66. So then we have to perform the swap. So what we have to do? We have to put 66 over here and we have to put 170 over here. Okay. So this is how the swapping happens. And now since there is one swap happening, since 66 came over here, we also have to go four more steps back. So since over here we don't have anything to the left of this array now to compare, we don't have index positions minus one, minus two, minus three and minus four, right? If we had that, we would have compared element four positions to the left also. That is one, two, three and four. So 66 will be compared with one more element to the left, which is at four interval that is at the gap. But right now we obviously we don't have anything to the left of this zero element. So that's why we won't compare further. But there would be a situation where let's say we are taking example of this one. So you'll see that in a minute and I'll explain what exactly I'm saying. But if there is a swap happening, remember, we also have to compare it four positions to the left again in an iterative way. Okay, so this is one swap. And now if you see step five, repeat until complete list is sorted. So obviously this is just first iteration. Now we will move one step forward. So when I say one step forward, what we did is First, we compared this zero element with four element, right? So now we have to move one, one step ahead. So from four, we will go to five and from zero, we will go to one. So now we have selected element five. And if you go four positions back, that is one, two, three, and four, that is at the interval of gap, we have to compare two with 75. And again, over here also, you can see 75 is greater than two. The leftmost element is greater than the rightmost element. So again, a swap is required. So 75 will go at two's place. So two will come over here and 75 will come over here. Okay. Now, since there was a swap happening, we also have to compare this two again, four positions back, but we don't have anything at four positions back right now. So we will not go ahead with that comparison. So again, we have to go one, one position ahead. Now we are done with five and one and we did the swapping. So now we take six. So if we go four positions back, which is the interval that is one, two, three and four. So now we have to compare index position two and index position six. So eight, zero, two and 24 is supposed to be compared. And obviously eight, zero, two is greater than 24. So again, swapping is required. 
so i'm gonna erase 802 and 24 so 24 will come over here and 802 will come over here again we will move forward now we are gonna compare 7 and then 4 positions back 1 2 3 and 4 so index position 3 is supposed to be compared so 90 is compared with 45 again 90 is greater than 45 so swapping is required so 45 will come over here 90 will come over here and since swapping happened we will also compare 45 that is this index position more 4 positions back so 1 2 3 and 4 but minus 1 is not an index position so we will not do the comparison so again we will move forward and now the last element that is 8th position element that is basically position 9 so because index position starts from 0 will be compared with 4 elements to the left that is 1 2 3 4 because 4 is the gap so 170 is now compared with 7 so again 170 is greater than 7 so swapping is required 7 comes over here 170 goes over here and now if you see we compared 7 and 170 and we did the swapping so 7 came over here and we also have to again compare 7 that is index position 4 with 4 positions to the left again so 1 2 3 and 4 and now we have one more element to the left at this interval of 4 so 7 and 66 is now compared and obviously you can see 66 is greater than 7 so again a swapping is required so 7 will come over here and 66 will go over here okay so in last case as i mentioned you can see we had two comparisons happening and two swappings happening because 7 was the smallest one so 7 has to come at the very start okay and now since we have exhausted the entire array from the pass one so this was the first pass where the gap was 4 and we've reached the end of the array so now pass one is done and for pass two now we will say gap is equal to gap by 2 so for the first pass gap was 4 so 4 by 2 will now become 2 okay so let's use another color now and for pass 2 this is the array that we have now and this is the same array that we've given as the input because it is an in place comparison sort so all the changes are happening in the input array only so for pass 2 we are going to take the gap of 2 and apply it on this array so from the first element we have to count 1 and 2 okay so for the first time now the gap is 2 so index position 2 will be compared with index position 0 because it is at a gap of 2 so if you start from right to left you can say 1 and 2 right so you can see 24 and 7 has to be compared and now if you see 7 is obviously smaller than 24 so we don't need any swapping right so now we move forward so now we come at index position 3 go two steps back because now we have gap of 2 so 1 and 2 so 2 and 45 is compared obviously 2 is smaller than 45 so no need of swap again move forward so index position 4 move two steps back or two positions back 1 and 2 so now 24 and 66 is compared obviously 24 is smaller than 66 again no swap needed move forward at index position 5 go two indexes back because gap is 2 so 4 and 3 so compare 45 and 75 again no swap needed move forward for 6 index position go two steps back 1 and 2 66 and 802 again no swap needed because 66 is obviously smaller move forward we have to compare 7 that is index position 7 and two steps back that is index position 5 75 smaller than 90 no, no swap needed and then we have the last element 170 which is compared with two steps back 1 and 2 that is 802 and now you can see 802 is obviously greater than 170 so a swap is required so 170 will be swapped with 802 so 170 will come over here 802 will come over here and now since there was a swap this 170 again has to be compared with another element which is again at a gap of 2 to the left so 1 and 2 so now 170 is compared with 66 also but 66 is obviously smaller than 170 so no swap is required and then we will not do the swapping so now we have again exhausted the entire array starting from start to the end we have come at the end of the array that is the last element so now the pass 2 is also done so pass 2 is done with the gap of 2 so obviously again pass 3 will be called because gap is greater than 0 that's the stopping condition so pass 3 will be 
gap is equal to gap by two, which is gonna be two by two this time because two was the gap value. So now we have gap of one. Let me use another color. Okay, and now you can see that the gap is one, which means we are gonna compare adjacent elements which are side by side. So from first element, if we shift one element ahead, this is the adjacent element. So now we have to compare these two elements, kind of like bubble sort, right? That's what we were doing in bubble sort also. So index position one element is compared with index position zero, and you can see seven is greater than two. So we need a swap. So we'll do the swapping. Two will come over here. Seven will come over here. And since a swapping was done, this index position zero will also be compared with one index position to the left. But we don't have minus one index position, so that comparison will not happen. Now we'll move forward. So we'll take this index position two, compare it with index position one at the gap of one because now the new gap is one. Seven is obviously smaller than twenty-four, so no swap is required. Similarly. 24 and 45 will be compared no swap required 45 and 66 will be compared no swap required 66 and 75 will be compared again no swap required 75 and 170 will be compared no swap required and when 170 and 90 will be compared there will be a swap required because 170 is greater than 90 so let's make that swap so 90 will come over here and 170 will come over here and since a swap happened We also have to check ninety with one step back, so ninety will be compared with seventy-five. But this time, seventy-five is smaller than ninety, so that swapping will not happen. So again, we will move forward now, coming at these two elements, one seventy and eight zero two. Comparison will happen, and no swap is needed because one one seventy is smaller than eight zero two. And this is where again pass three will be done. Okay. Now, if you observe the array, we've already arrived at the sorted array. We have two, seven, twenty-four, forty-five, sixty-six, seventy-five, ninety, one seventy, and eight zero two, which is in sorted order. So, for pass three, gap again will become gap divided by two, and this time it would be one by two, which is going to be zero point five. So, ultimately, it is going to be zero because this point five will be truncated because it is an integer value when we programmatically implement it. And now, this is the stopping condition because now. Gap is not greater than zero. Gap is equal to zero, but it is not greater. So this is where pass four will not happen, and our algorithm will stop working, and we've arrived at our output, which is an array that is sorted in proper ascending order using shell sort sorting algorithm. Okay, so this is the overall working of how the algorithm progresses, and I've written some steps. You can note them down if you're preparing your answers. but this was just a representation in the form of working in the form of visual diagram of how the gap is selected how the comparison happens at the gap or the interval elements and then the swapping happens okay now if you have to actually see how programmatically it will happen we will first have to see the pseudo code and understand in a coding perspective in the algorithmic way how this shell sort will be implemented because in part 2 we will obviously be writing a c++ program to implement the shell sort algorithm Right, so let's see the pseudo code. Okay, so as you can see on the left hand side, we have the entire pseudo code of shell sort algorithm, and it is kind of in a English plus coding format. So that's how pseudo code is. It's a mix of English and a little bit of code. So it's looking more like code because I've literally copy pasted the C plus plus code. So the for loop is pretty much in the proper syntax. But then I also have English steps. We have one one point one, and then one point one point one, the innermost parts of the inner loops. So we have three for loops over here. You can see. So this is for loop one. This is for loop two, and we have one more for loop for loop three, and then we have some statements which actually impact the overall process. So what we'll do? We'll take the same array. This is our same array in an unsorted way, and we will track all the elements or all the variables in this pseudo code like gap. We have n, we have j, we have i, we have temp. So you can see over here, I've written all of them. The size obviously is going to be standard and fixed. It is going to be nine. That's the size of the array. Then we will keep a count of pass. We know that there are going to be three passes. We are going to keep a track of the gap variable. The gap will change from four to two to to one. Okay. So we know that these are the three values because our formula to calculate the gap is gap is equal to n by two, and we are using this iteratively. We are going to keep a track of the j variable inside the for loop. Also, the condition of the j variable that is j less than n, the temp variable which will keep 
and store one element in the array we'll explain and i'll explain what exactly this is then we also have the i variable for the innermost for loop and the two conditions of the i variable that is i greater than equal to gap and arr of i minus gap greater than temp okay so you'll understand this line by line and then it will make sense of how this shell sort works in a programmatic way okay so let's start off with step number one in the shell sort we'll go step by step and we'll keep a track of all these variables and then you'll understand how the algorithm is progressing so for the first step we have the very first for loop we say gap is equal to n by 2 now for the first time n is 9 n is obviously going to be 9 all the time and gap will be n by 2 so 9 by 2 which is 4.5 but as I mentioned, the 0.5 will be truncated because it is an integer value. So gap is going to be 4. Okay. The condition is, is gap greater than 0? Is 4 greater than 0? Yes. So now we will go inside the for loop. This increment and decrement operation happens at the end of the for loop that is after one iteration, right? So we will go inside the for loop. We have another loop. So this is second loop. Over here we say in j equals to gap. Now we just calculated the gap value as 4, so j will be 4, okay? So j is basically going to point this element, j is going to point 66, okay? Then we go inside the for loop because j is less than n. What is the value of n? n is the size and what is j? j we just said is 4. So 4 is obviously less than 9. So we go again inside this for loop, the second for loop. Inside this we say temp is equal to arr of j j is 4 so arr of 4 is 66 so temp will store 66 let's write 66 over here now i would request you guys to take a pencil and paper and you know note down all these variable values draw this array and dry run this entire algorithm along with me at least for first few rounds so that you understand how it is progressing and that will give you the best understanding okay then in the next step we say i equals to 0 so i becomes 0 and after this we have the third loop the third for loop here we say i equals to j so j was 4 right you can see 4 over here so i also will become 4 now is i greater than equal to gap what is the value of gap gap is 4 i is also 4 is i greater than or equal to gap yes so this first condition becomes true because i and gap is equal so the condition is greater than or equal to also so first condition is true then in between we have a and operation so the second condition also needs to be true. What is the second condition? The second condition says ARR of i minus gap. So what is i? i is 4. What is gap? Gap is also 4. So ARR of 0 should be greater than temp. The temp value we just said is 66. What is ARR of 0? 170. Is 170 greater than 66? Yes. So this second condition also becomes true. And now you can see we are comparing the two elements at the gap of 4. That's the gap for the first round, first pass. So it's pass 1. So from 0, we say 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 0 index position and 4 index position is at a gap of 4. So that's what we are comparing over here now. And since both these conditions are true, we go inside this for loop now. And inside the third for loop is where the swapping is happening. We say ARR of i. So i we've said is 4. So ARR of 4 is equal to ARR of i minus gap. So i is 4, gap is also 4. So ARR of 4 is gonna store ARR of 0. So 170 will now be stored in ARR of 4. Right? So assignment happens from RHS to the LHS. So ARR of 0 that is 170 is now stored in 66. So let's make that swapping. So 170 will come over here and now in case if you're wondering where is 66 now you can see that the temp variable is still holding the 66 so still there is some code to be followed so after this statement that is the only single statement in the third for loop we will again come at the start of the for loop and now i minus equal to gap that is i is equal to i minus gap this is what the decrement is happening so i was 4 so i now will become 4 minus 4 that is i will become 0 so let's make i 0 over here now the decrement has happened now again the condition will be checked there are two conditions what are the two conditions i needs to be greater than or equal to gap and this condition itself is false because i has become 0 is 0 greater than or equal to gap what is gap gap is 4 is 0 greater than or equal to 4 no false 
so since first condition is false itself this condition has become false itself we don't have to compare the second condition or calculate the second condition because there is a and in between and when there is a and in between if one condition is false the entire output is always going to be false so this for loop will now stop working or complete its execution we will come outside the for loop to this step 1.1.2.2 .1 and now here we say arr of i equals to temp i has just become zero so arr of zero will now be equal to temp which is 66 right so 66 will come at this location okay so now you can see the swapping is done we are at this statement that is end of second for loop let me just use another color so this bracket is for this for loop so now we will go at the start of the for loop now j is equal to j plus 1 so j is equal to j plus 1 what was j initially j was 4 so now j will become 5 so now new j value will become 5 let's write 5 over here what is the condition now now the condition again will be checked of the second for loop j has to be less than n so 5 is less than obviously n n is what 9 and 9 will not change 5 is less than 9 it is true so again now the for loop will be executed so we basically have incremented from 4 to 5 okay so this is exactly what the working was also happening right we were moving one position ahead then we were going four steps back so one two three and four so again a comparison is going to happen between index position five and index position one since 75 is greater than 2, the inner loop will also execute. This for loop will also become true. 75 will come over here and 2 will come over here. Right? Then again the increment will happen. J will become 6. J is still less than 9. So J will become 6. Again moving 4 steps back because gap is 4. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now we are comparing index position 2 and index position 6. Again, 802 is obviously greater than 24. So 802 will first come at 24 index position. And later 24 will come at this place. And if you want, you can pause this video and dry run all these steps, internal steps. I would highly recommend that you do it. I'm skipping few steps or few iterations because it's repetitive. And I'll show you the last step because there is a little variation in the last step. But let's move ahead. Now again j will be 7. 7 is still less than 9. We will go 4 steps back or gap steps back. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 90 is supposed to be compared with 45 and swapping is going to happen because 90 is greater than 45. So we will go in the inner for loop and do the swapping. 45 will come over here. 90 will come over here. Then again j will be incremented j will become 8 so now when the j value becomes 8 we are at this position right so moving four steps back 1 2 3 and 4 we have 170 so let's calculate this second for loop for this step because there are two comparisons that that are going to happen so i'll show you what i mean j has become 8 right so we are at this index position we are in the for loop of course the initialization only happens once so this is not going to happen again and again. Now j has become 8. In the temp we are storing arr of j. So arr of j is 7. Right. That is arr of 8. Which is 7. So temp will have 7. Then we say i equals to 0. i becomes 0. Then we go in the third for loop. That is the innermost for loop. We say i equals to j. j is what? j we just said is 8. Right. Let me write 8 over here. We just said j is 8. So i also becomes 8. What are the two conditions for the inner for loop? We have i greater than or equal to gap and this larger condition that is these two conditions. Do they hold true? Is i greater than or equal to gap? i is 8. Is 8 greater than or equal to 4? Yes. The first condition is true. The second condition is arr of i which is 8 minus gap which is 4 should be greater than temp. What is arr of 8 minus 4? arr of 4. arr of 4 is 170. 170 should be greater than temp. What is temp? Temp we just said is 7. Right? This is the value of 7. So is 170 greater than 7? Yes. So even second condition is true. So now we go inside this for loop and we do the swapping. So we say arr of i that is arr of 8 will store arr of 
एट माइनस फोर दैट इज ए आर आर ऑफ फोर सो ए आर आर ऑफ एट विल स्टोर ए आर आर ऑफ फोर सो वन सेवेंटी विल नाउ बी स्वैप्ड और विल बी पुट एट दिस लास्ट पोजिशन सो वन सेवेंटी विल कम ओवर यूर ओके एज ऑफ नाउ सेवन इज स्टिल नॉट कम एट इंडेक्स वर्जन फोर बिकॉज वी आर एट दिस स्टेप सो नाउ सिंस दिस इज द ओनली वन स्टेटमेंट इन द इनर मोस्ट फॉर लूप इन द थर्ड फॉर लूप वी विल अगेन कम एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द फॉर लूप एंड नाउ आई इज इक्वल टू आई माइनस गैप वॉट इज आई आई विल बिकम एट बिकॉज आई इज एट माइनस वट इज गैप गैप इज फोर माइनस फोर सो आई विल बिकम फोर राइट सो द न्यू वैल्यू ऑफ आई लेट्स राइट इट ओवर योर विल बिकम फोर नाउ अगेन द कंडीशन विल बी चेक्ड right because i just got decremented so now the two conditions again has to be i greater than equal to gap so is 4 greater than equal to gap what is gap 4 yes 4 is equal to 4 right so this condition is still true now what is second condition arr of i that is 4 because i has become 4 minus gap what is gap again 4 should be greater than temp temp we have said is 7 so arr of 0 should be greater than 7 what is arr of 0 it is 66 so 66 is obviously greater than 7 so again this condition also becomes true so both the conditions have become true so again we will go inside this for loop that is inside the third for loop for the second time and now we will say arr of i is equal to arr of i minus gap what is i i is 4 so arr of 4 will now become arr of 4 minus 4 Because i is four, gap is also four, so error of zero. What is error of zero? Sixty six. Sixty six will now be stored at index position four. So this one seventy will be erased and sixty six will be stored over here. Okay. So initially seven was over here and one seventy was over here, right? So then we put one seventy over here, and since there was a swapping that happened, we also compared this four index position with another element which is four steps back. and since we have one element that is at four steps back that is 1 2 3 and 4 we could make that comparison so again we compared 66 also and since 66 was also greater than temp we put 66 over here and now ultimately lastly again we will go at the start of the for loop after this statement i will become i minus gap so i is 4 so i will become 4 minus gap that is 4 so i will become 0 so the new i value will now become 0 and now this condition will become false because 0 is not greater than equal to gap that is 4 so this condition now will become false we will come outside the for loop and then we have this statement which is arr of i and i has now become 0 so arr of 0 will now become temp what is the value inside temp 7 so the, at this zero index position we will store 7 okay so i hope you understood what just happened we did two comparisons over here initially 7 was over here at the last index position we compared it with four steps back where we had 170 and 170 was greater so obviously 170 got transferred over here but we also compared 7 with more four steps back that is at index position 0 and there was 66 over here so 66 is also greater than 7 so we transferred 66 over here and then ultimately 7 comes at this last or the very first index position and this comparison was possible because these elements that is index position 8 index position 4 and index position 0 are at a gap of 4 that's why we could do the multiple comparisons okay so for example if we take index position 6 if we count 1 2 3 and 4 we have index position 2 so 6 and 2 are at a gap of 4 but we don't have one more element at a gap of 4 right we don't have 1 2 and then we don't have minus 1 and minus 2 we don't have one more element over here so that's why two times comparison is not possible for any other element except this one for pass 1 when the gap is 4 okay so this was one pass and after this first pass we are left with these elements let me just erase out the extra content so we were at this last index position because j was 8 and after this transfer we will come again at the very start of the second for loop this is the second for loop so now j will again get incremented j will now become 9 so j will become 9 over here let me write 9 now the condition is j has to be less than 
is 9 less than 9 because size is also 9? No. Right? So this statement becomes false or this condition becomes false. So we will come outside this for loop. So this is that entire larger for loop and we will come at the end of the outermost for loop that is the first for loop which is actually giving us the passes and now gap will become gap by 2. So gap will become gap by 2 which is going to be the existing gap value that is 4 divided by 2 which is going to be 2. Okay. So now again 2 is obviously greater than 0 the stopping condition is gap has to be greater than 0 once the gap becomes 0 the outermost for loop will also stop but we have two more passes so now we have pass 2 where the new gap value has become 2 so the new gap value has become 2 and for this we have this array for the second pass and we will again go inside this loop and all the entire pseudocode will again execute itself but this time we will compare elements which are at a gap of 2 so 0 and 2 will be compared and there will be no switch because 7 is obviously smaller than 24 then we will move forward index position 1 and 3 will be compared no switch required then index position 2 and 4 will be compared no switch required then index position 3 and 5 will be compared again no switch required index position 4 and 6 will be compared no switch required Index position 5 and 7 will be compared, 75 is less than 90, no switch required. And lastly, index position 6 and 8 will be compared, of course switch is required. So 170 will come over here and 802 will come over here. And since a switch has happened, this 170 will also be compared with two index positions to the back. So 6 and 4 will also be compared. But 66 is smaller than 170, so, so no swapping is required and here's where the algorithm will stop and this is where the second pass or pass number two will come to a halt i'm not actually calculating all the variable values right now because it will just increase the time of this video i hope you've understood the entire working of this algorithm you can pause this video and you know dry run this step by step yourself to better understand the individual passes but in the last pass that is pass number three the gap will be again gap by two which is going to be 1. So then we will compare side by side elements. 7 will be compared with 2. So there is a swap required. So 2 and 7. Then 7 will be compared with 24. No swap required. 24 will be compared with 45. No swap required. So on and so forth. And only swap that is going to be required is 170 and 90. So 90 will come over here. 170 will come over here. This 90 will again be compared with one position back with 75 but no swap is required since it is smaller than 90 and there you have our entire sorted array using shell sort algorithm okay so that's it for this video guys i know this video was little lengthy but the algorithm itself took a lot of time to dry run but that's the right approach if you are an absolute beginner and if you really want to understand the behind the scenes working you have to take a pencil and a paper just draw the array and track all the elements that is all the variables in the algorithm in the pseudocode. Keep a track of them and see how the algorithm progresses, how the swapping and sorting happens. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the entire working, entire pseudocode of shell sort algorithm. Now this algorithm will be very easy to implement in C++ once you've understood this pseudocode. And that's what we are going to do in the second part. That is the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. I hope you've understood shell sort so do share it with your friends as well and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.